Yo guys, what's up? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles back again. You're at Sonic Academy for another how to use video. Today we are checking out the brand new Saturn 2 from FabFilter, their multi band distortion units. Let's dive in and check this out. Right, so here we have Saturn 2. If you're not familiar with the original Saturn, it's a distortion unit that uh, works over multiple bands, up to six in total. And uh, you can get everything from sort of gentle saturation right up to sort of quite complex um, experimental effects. Let's just take a listen quickly. I've just got, for the sake of this demo, a little um, synth loop playing in the background. <laughs> Those are some of these sort of more subtle color presets, right down to some of these quite um, heavily modulated effects presets. This has been given a massive overall as far as the GUI is concerned. Um, it's a lot slicker looking now. Um, it's completely resizable. Uh, you also have this pretty cool little uh, full screen mode now as well. And uh, the modulation has all been given this pretty cool uh, sort of blur effect in the background to kind of just visually represent the uh, movement that's going on in the patch that you're working on. So that is all new in version 2. Uh, we're going to run through all the controls for Saturn 2 now. Just select a clean patch and just take a look at how this works. Uh, so just quickly along the top and the bottom, uh, you've got some undo and redo commands here. You can A, B between two different settings, uh, your preset uh, selection as we saw, your full screen. And then uh, down at the bottom, we've got a MIDI learn function. So you can actually assign controls to this. Uh, there's another way to actually assign controllers as well, which we will take a look at in the modulation section. Uh, linear phase, this is new in version 2, so this will basically uh, prevent any phasing issues from using the crossovers. Um, and this makes it really desirable for use in a mastering situation. Um, when you are doing quite steep crossovers and stuff, you can induce phase. Linear phase will prevent that from happening. It will probably add quite a bit of latency to the plugin, but in a mastering situation, that is uh, not such an issue. Um, the high quality mode has also been given a superb setting now. This is pretty close to zero aliasing and um, more uh, oversampling. So those can be enabled and disabled. We've got a master output gain, input gain with panning controls for each. Uh, left and right mode, uh, which can be switched to mid side as well. We'll take a listen to that in a bit as well. Um, the master mix, master bypass, and then the feedback um, switch that you have here. It's unrestricted feedback. This will actually allow you to get the plugin to self-oscillate um, when using the feedback in the distortion controls here. Um, so let's take a look at the actual uh, controls for the distortion algorithms. Um, you've got a bypass for whatever specific band you're working on over here, in addition to the global bypass. Another preset selection, this is different from the global uh, presets, you can save presets specifically for a single band and load those up accordingly over various bands. Uh, then you've got your distortion algorithms. If we click here, you'll see in version 2 they're very um, neatly organized, which is uh, quite nice as opposed to the original that was just kind of all uh, laid out in series. Uh, you'll notice that there's a couple of new algorithms here as well. Uh, we've got subtle options for the tube, tape, and saturation uh, algorithms. And this is very gentle. Uh, we can take a listen to that. Very, very gentle saturation. Uh, it's a little bit more audible with the tube and tape. But very pleasing um, saturation effects. Uh, you've got your amp sims in here as well. And uh, the transformer uh, category is new to version 2. 
obviously simulating the distortion that you get from overdriving a transformer as opposed to the tube or tape. And lastly, in addition to the original smudge, rectify and destroy algos, you've got breakdown and fold back. Uh, breakdown is an interesting one. This is actually a pitch shifting algorithm which kind of starts to break up the more you drive it. We'll take a listen to this one clean. Uh, it's interesting for sort of creating tape stop effects. Uh, you can even use this to sort of shift a uh, signal an octave down um, if you drop this in at 50% and mix it back with the original. You can get some interesting pitch shifting effects with that as well. Um, then uh, moving on to this bottom row, we've got a mix for the... Uh, band that we're working on as we spoke about the feedback and the frequency uh, this will give you some quite nice feedback effects and then the dynamics controls I'm going to switch to a different channel quickly just so we can illustrate the dynamics just got a drum loop here uh, turning this dial to the right will essentially compress and squash. It's quite extreme compression that it does. Uh, it'll squash everything uh, to make it more compressed, the signal. Um, now, this is pre-drive, so this can be quite useful for, say, for instance, vocals or drums to kind of fatten up a loop and um, glue them together before running it through the distortion algorithm. And we can take a listen to this. You can hear that compression kicking in. Uh, conversely, if you, or inversely, if you move this to the left, you're essentially expanding the signal. So any transients that you have in there are going to be kind of uh, accentuated and you're going to get almost like a gating effect um, happening. So let's check that one out as well. And it becomes quite apparent when you run this through distortion. Um, we'll go with a warm tube. So you get the transients kind of getting more of the drive in that case. And if you go to the compressed version, more of the whole signal is being uh, driven harder through the uh, distortion circuit. Uh, moving on to the last controls, you've got the drive knob, pretty self-explanatory, as well as a four-band graphic equalizer that you can use for shaping stuff a little bit further. This is per band as well. Um, obviously, a band down at the bottom here, the presence is not going to have much effect but you can use this to uh, shape your sound a little bit or your tone a little bit more um, and lastly just want to take a look at the panning controls because these are quite interesting you can uh, set panning controls for both the drive and the level so the level is pretty straightforward it does what you'd expect it pans from left to right. If you want to reset any controls, you can hold the control button and click. Uh, but you also have the option to um, distort just the left or the right signal as well. So you can get some interesting um, uh, stereo effects with that as, uh, in addition to your standard distortion on both channels. Um, and then also, as we spoke about, you can switch this into mid-side mode. So we could also just run the drive on the sides. Now, there's not a lot of side information here, but we can move that to the mids, for example. And then mix the between the mids and the sides on this one here, so we can have full mid and the side information. You can hear now there's no distortion occurring at all because all the drive is being applied to the mids only and not the sides. As we dial that back, the distortion comes back in again. So that pretty much covers all those controls. We've also got a number of con um, settings that we can do for the top here. We can split this into various different bands. Uh, you can select between the different bands now and the level control basically coincides with this tab that you can pull up and down. So you can kind of shape your tone like this uh, almost as an EQ. One of the new functions as well in version 2 is you now have control over the slope. So you can actually set 
the slope to be a, from a 6 dB per octave slope, to quite a gentle one, right up to a 48 dB per octave, quite a steep slope. And the nice thing with this is a lot of plugins that work in a similar way with multibands like this, uh, they will have a defined slope for the entire plugin. So all the crossovers will inherit the same uh, uh, slopes. Uh, this one you can actually set individual parameters for each of them. So we have a 612, we can have a 36 over here and a 48 down at the bottom. So you have a lot of control over those. And then obviously, if you're using these 48 dB ones, um, you have that linear phase, as we discussed, to negate some of the phase issues that might be occurring there. Um, so that's the multiband setup. Uh, we're going to jump back into clean again. And I want to just run through a few of the mod sources because this is where things get really interesting as far as creative processing goes. There's a number of new um, modulation sources. In addition to the old ones, the XY, LFO, etc., you've now got a slider. Uh, and setting up the mod source is pretty easy. You just click and drag from this little control here and drop it on any function that you want. Now, the slider is cool because you can use this as a macro control. Um, let's say, for example, we want to bring up the distortion with our slider. So there we have it. Um, but at the same time, we may want to compensate slightly for the volume increase. So we can drop that onto the level, set this to negative. We'll do a little bit of volume decrease. So now dragging the slider, you can see we have multiple parameters being affected at the same time. There's a number of other uh, things that we can do here with um, LFOs, for example. We'll split this into three bands. And let's turn down the volume of our lower and mid, uh, lower and high bands. We'll just keep the mid band. And let's add an LFO source. Once again, click and drag. We can actually drop this onto the cutoff frequency or the crossover frequency. And we'll do that for both. We'll do that for both of the uh, crossovers. So you can see now our LFO modulating the... Uh, frequency for this uh, mid band. Let's jump back to our baseline. And this is interesting as well. This um, LFO will actually go right up into audio rate, uh, 500 hertz. So you can actually actually hear that sort of uh, audio rate occurring there. Um, these can be synced and uh, you can pretty much design your own um, LFOs or steps, uh, step sequences basically. You can add in new steps to this which can be adjusted accordingly. And you also have a random function here to do stuff like uh, sample and hold, which we'll take a look at. You actually have a few presets for the LFOs down here. Uh, if you grab sample and hold, you'll see you have a single step that is set to random. So each step will get a random value there. Uh, let's sync this to eighth notes and take a listen to our sample and hold uh, modulation going on now. And we'll just increase the values for these and this one. So we've got some interesting filtering going on there with the modulation from the LFO. Now, uh, lastly, I just wanted to quickly just take a look at the envelope followers. There's a new function in this one as well. Um, aside from it, the usual envelope follower functionality, we can now click this little button down here. And actually, let's just, uh, yeah, we'll leave that. Um, let's just click this one and we can set this to transient mode. <laughs> So this use, uh, will act more as a transient detector now. As soon as the transient crosses a specific threshold, it will uh, send a trigger as a signal. Uh, and obviously you can set the release time. So it's a lot more um, quicker acting than the standard um, uh, envelope follow that you had before. Let's set this to a destroy algorithm and we'll assign our uh, envelope follow to the drive and just take a look at what that does. So 
So you can see as those transients are hitting this band, it's uh, adding drive to it, as we've said, from this um, envelope follower module at the bottom. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's a number of, uh, there's a few other ones, the envelope generator as well, and then a MIDI source, as I said, there's another way of adding MIDI control to this for live uh, applications. You can add a mod wheel uh, or any of these uh, keyboard aftertouch, etc. velocity. Um, you can send that from a MIDI channel and have that interacting with uh, Saturn 2 as well just by dragging this to any control you see fit. So that covers the pretty extensive modulation section and brings us to the end of this video. Um, all in all, this is a fantastic update. Uh, you know, it, it was a great plugin to begin with, but they've really kind of taken it up a notch. The new um, algorithms sound great. And the visual representation and the streamlined um, modulation section is really kind of the star of the show for me. You can do some really, really creative stuff with, uh, with Saturn 2. So definitely go check this one out. Um, typical Fab Filter, uh, GUI, and amazing workflow. Really, really cool plugins to work with. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you soon here at Sonic Academy. I'll catch you later. Ciao. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.